Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unboxing Tomorrow Adventure in Electronics, Robotics and Communication Systems where you can find this brand new series on the AVR microcontroller. To recap part 0, which is where I recommend starting if you're completely new to this project, the AVR series is a family of 8-bit microcontrollers and you can program them in C, C++, and assembly. Because of their small size and their low cost, you can use them in a lot of applications where a larger, more expensive processor would probably be overkill. We're talking robotics, feedback control systems, interactive displays, and several others. In fact, there are so many possible end uses, I'll leave it to you to decide exactly how to use it. Today in part 1, I'll be covering how to install AVR support, including a programming environment called Microchip Studio, as well as a few tips if you run into trouble. As of this video, I am not affiliated with Atmel or Microchip technology other than being a regular user since the year 2001. To get started with this Windows installation, at a minimum I recommend having a web browser of course, and anti-malware software, which I recommend for just about everything. In this video, I'm going to install Microchip Studio, and by the end you should be able to program just about any AVR device of your choosing. You should know that this final programming step will erase any data already stored on the AVR. If you have extracted your AVR from an existing product, like an Arduino, this step will erase the onboard bootloader, so instead I recommend purchasing a brand new AVR unless you accept this loss of data. AVRs usually leave the factory in a blank state unless you request otherwise, and this tutorial is intended for blank AVRs. Finally, before you handle the AVR, I recommend watching my video on electrostatic discharge so you can get the most lifetime out of your device. While I'm loading up the official website, HTTPS, microchip.com, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters and people who visited the website for supporting this blog and also providing vital feedback. At the official webpage, enter Microchip Studio into the search field, or at least for now, you can navigate to Tools and Software. Look for a section titled Microchip Studio for AVR and SAM devices, and then follow the on-screen instructions that best match your operating system. For this example, I am downloading the web installer, which in my opinion is the easiest to use. As with everything you download off the internet these days, scan it with your favorite anti-malware tool, and if it looks safe, run the program. Microchip Studio is an integrated development environment, or IDE, so this installer will not only give you the code editor, but also the hardware drivers, compilers, and software frameworks for the AVR series. Review the end user license agreement, including the default installation directory, and then confirm or deny whether you want to send anonymous data. Review the options, and then proceed if you approve. As of 2021, you can also find links to the GNU Compiler Collection, or GCC, and the AVR libc library. If those sound familiar, it's because those resources are likely what you would use if you were running Linux. Next, you need to select the architecture of interest. At a minimum, you'll need AVR enabled, but I'll install all three. Next, you can optionally choose to install the Atmel Software Framework, or ASF. The ASF includes hardware abstraction tools that can be handy in advanced projects, so I'm installing that too. In the next step, you can optionally read the release notes and then proceed to system validation. The validation step will check to see if anything in your system might interfere with the installation. This includes Windows updates already in progress and conflicts with other software. It won't proceed unless you see all check marks in this screen, so be prepared to follow any instructions if you see any other symbol. Click next and before long your installation should begin. There's a decent chance the system will also offer to install the Microchip Visual Studio isolated shell, so I recommend staying near the computer in case you're asked to verify. When the installation completes, it's probably a good time to check Windows Device Manager, plug in the AVR programming tool, and then verify that the tool shows up in a new category titled Microchip Tools. With the tool still plugged in, you can launch the Microchip Studio application. Because this is a first time run, it's a good idea to look in the upper right corner and then check to see if the notifications flag is highlighted yellow. If it is, you should click on it and then follow any on-screen instructions for any relevant updates. Be prepared to reset the application or even unplug and replug the tool 
if the update requires it. After that, we need to make sure that the programming tool is listed. You can check this by going to Tools, Device Programming, or by clicking this icon. The Device Programming screen should list the tool and possibly a simulator. I've received feedback that some brand new MPLAB and PIC branded products, such as the Microchip Snap, may require a firmware upgrade before Microchip Studio will include it on the list. If that's the case, then the tool will probably be visible in Device Manager, but not in Microchip Studio. To fix this, you will need to install a separate IDE called MPLAB X, also available for Microchip, open MPLAB X, create a new empty project for any PIC device, select the tool that you want to update, and then in the dashboard, click on the two rotating arrows, follow any additional on-screen instructions, and then return to this step. From my own experience, Atmel and AVR branded tools, such as the AVR ISP Mark II and the newer Atmel ICE, usually work right out the box without having to update anything. Now it's time to create a blank application compile it for the C language, and then push that empty application down the in-system programming interface and into the actual silicon chip. If you made it this far, and you have all the resources from part zero, then all you need to do is go to File, New, New Project. In the New Project Wizard, select the GCC C Executable Project. For now, the default project name and location are probably acceptable but you can use pretty much any name that doesn't throw a warning. Next, proceed by answering any remaining questions about your AVR part number as completely as possible, and then the IDE should automatically generate a nearly empty project containing only a main function and a empty while loop. You can build the empty project by simply pressing F7 or by navigating to Build, Build Solution. In the output window, you should see a detailed report containing the phrase, build succeeded. If so, we can finally upload the code by navigating to Tools, Device Programming. At the top of the window, you should be able to click the read buttons until the tool, the device, the interface, the device signature, and the target voltage are all readable. If so, you can navigate to this area and then click this button to program the device. If you get an error uploading, here are two common problem sources. First, you should double check the wiring on the ISP interface, which I can tell you I've gotten wrong before. This can especially happen if you accidentally mirror or rotate the ISP interface when you're doing circuit board layout, or if you misnumber the connector in the schematic. Secondly, you'll need to make sure that the target voltage is non-zero. Better yet, it should be inside the recommended range for the device, and bear in mind that these days, very few tools will actually supply electrical power to the AVR and hopefully that covers it. Linux users wanting to get started also have Linux-based tools available by way of AVR Dude. This option is outside the scope of this short video, but I recommend checking back in or leaving a comment if you'd like to see this done in Linux. And of course, Microchip Studio and MPLabX are active projects likely to change from time to time, so in the event of any inconsistencies between this tutorial and the official guides, you should refer to official instructions first. In the next part, I'm going to be covering how to control the AVR's digital outputs, including devices that are just too large and too powerful for the AVR to handle on its own. Like always, this is possible thanks to Patreon support and thanks to my affiliates, including TorGuard Online Privacy Protection Services, TorGuard VPN or Virtual Private Networks, is the service that I use to protect my online data from online tracking and endless data collection. You can help this blog and your privacy at the same time by following the link in the video description to learn more about VPNs, business VPNs, private email, and even physical VPN routers. Stay posted for part two, and as always, have a great day.